When I feature the HS402 oscilloscope DIY project on the channel, I usually get comments along the lines of, I really like it, but you know, like my eyesight ain't what it used to be, or my hands aren't quite as steady as uh, they would need to be. Uh, can I just buy one ready made, right? And uh, I do not build any of my gadgets for sale. Like I'm much too lazy for that. You know, you're looking at a guy that uh, left work at 53. So I mean, uh, do I look ambitious? You know. So I didn't have any kind of a positive response for that until now. It's the HS502, factory assembled. It's just hit the marketplace. At the time of this video, it's $95. And it can be found on Martin Lawrence store, link in the description. Like the first thing that's gonna impress you is the fit and finish of this. And it's relatively small size. Although it sports a full size USB, it has a power and connection LED indicators and a pulse width modulation pin. Like, to be clear, this is not just an HS402 circuit that's been shoved inside a shiny blue box. HS502 has a brand new circuit. It's not STM32 based. The MCU used in here is new. Um, to my knowledge, not released outside of China yet. The components that were used in here are close tolerance, high precision, which aids in the calibration. And by the way, HS402 comes fully calibrated right out of the box. So I'm gonna take a fairly deep dive here and I'm gonna start with a spec that at first glance would seem lackluster. And that is the bandwidth. It's 1.6 megahertz. Now, that compares favorably to the one megahertz of the HS402. But you know, budget oscilloscopes in this kind of price range typically have 20 megahertz on their spec sheet. So I'm gonna make an analogy here. And if you've ever been in the market for a telescope and you're budget-minded and you look at the specs and they're screaming at you with magnification like 1,000 times, and you're really impressed. If you buy that, when you go to use it, you're gonna find out that you've got a blob that's magnified 1,000 times. There are many other factors that should have influenced your purchase decision, but the marketing is really on the magnification. The analogy is that in oscilloscopes, it's not magnification, but it's bandwidth. So they'll go out and you're gonna see 20 megahertz and 50 and 80 and so on. And, and there's some truth to that, but it's not the only metric that should influence your buying decision. The bottom line is, what is the waveforms that I capture with these things? So to illustrate my point, I'm gonna run a 100 kilohertz square wave. I'm gonna let OSC42 under its native window software, put its best foot forward, and HS502 under the HScope Android app, do its best, and then we'll judge. Remember this PMW pin that I showed you earlier? Well, that is not fixed at one kilohertz like is typically found on most oscilloscopes. This is fully adjustable up to one megahertz, as well as the duty cycle from one to 99%. It will be our 100 kilohertz square wave signal for both oscilloscopes. Okay, first the OSC 482. Let's start the device. We're going to let it on auto find its own. I'm going to click auto one more time. And there we go. So I can tell you that that's about the best waveform on this 100 kilohertz square wave I can get with the OSC 482 in its native uh, Lodo Windows software. 
It can perform a bit better when it's uh, s supported by 8 scope, but um, this is the comparison here. You'll see that it chose a 2.4 mega sample rate. If I push it a little bit, let's just manually do that, where it's, it went to 50 million samples per second. If you look at the top corner, it only has a buffer size of one kilo samples. And it, it's really not its best foot forward. So I'm going to go back to where it had automatically chosen to do. And this is what we have. Take a good look at it because we're going to compare it to HS502 under H scope. By the way, guys, this is the pulse width modulation control for both duty cycle and frequency. See the sample rate choices on HS502? I'm choosing 13 mega samples, its highest rate. Now, do you remember earlier when I hit auto on the OSC42 for the capture that it took a couple of hits and it took a little while to do the capture? Let's press play on H scope. Right there, already captured. Let's see what we did get. Zoom in a little bit. I don't know about you guys, I'm voting HS502. And look at this feature. This is the measurement, automatic measurement feature in 8 scope. One more hit puts you in Instagram mode. Look at how nice that is. Now that I've got the bandwidth out of the way, I want to focus on those specs that really make the HS502 shine. Right. So if we have a look here, it has a plus or minus 16 volt input. That is really nice for automotive work. And that 16 volt is further divisible into five ranges. And we always tend to choose the smallest range that will not cause overscale on our waveform. The reason being that the noise is a percentage of that range. And all of those HS series oscilloscope are really, really good on the noise metric. So how does low noise really translate into uh, practical use, like in captured waveforms? A triangle waveform is a really good way to show if there's any noise along the slopes here. It'll pop right up. And no, this is not an HS502 captured waveform. This was captured with a Hantec 6022BE oscilloscope. See the noise along the slopes here, right? Now, before we judge this a little too harshly, um, on our H-Scope Telegram group, we were fooling around with some of this. And some of the other guys were posting waveforms that were captured with scopes that were like 10 times the price of the 6022 here. And really, this came out looking good compared to those expensive ones, all right? So now I bet you're itching to see what an HS502 triangular waveform would look like. This was captured earlier. You see along the slopes? That's what low noise is all about. So when we're fooling around with this on the Telegram group, somebody posted a waveform from a Pico. It was the only one that was able to match this, but at 40 times the price. So I want to talk a little bit about the buffer. You see down here at the bottom, it says 32,000 sample points, a full page. You'll get between 16,000, 32,000, 64,000 points on a page, depending on the sample rate that's been chosen. That's one page. 8-scope does not record sequential pages. That's not the way it works. For that, we have the automotive module. Think of the automotive module as a continuous stream mode. 
no page boundaries, just a continuous stream. And that's very difficult to do. That's why you tend to get low sample rates availability in that mode. And because automotive work is typically low frequency stuff, and it lends itself to this method a lot. That's why this is called the automotive module. On most supported scopes, the maximum you can get is 150 kilo sample per second in that automotive mode. With an HS402, you're going to top out at the 300 kilo sample. HS502, so it's made by H scope for H scope. And it is able to stream continuously without a flaw at 600 kilo sample per second. The HS502 comes with the H scope license and the automotive module license. Like together, that's roughly a $25 value right there included in the purchase price. Like it's a no brainer. Followers of the channel will know that I work closely with Martin from time to time. That's if uh, 13 time zones uh, is close with he being in Shanghai and me up here in Northern Canada. Full disclosure, I receive no financial compensation for this or any other of Martin's products. Thanks for watching guys. Catch you soon.